Miss Turaga reconnected the pipes, Ben had one last thing to do. Would you like to open the main and allow everyone to have water again? <gasps> Open it! Lefty Lucy! <laughs> Hundley wasn't sure George should be taught things like this. George, would you like a boat or a nice ducky? <laughs> I'll go first thing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you'll clean up so I can go buy toys now? <laughs> Remember how to use the dishwasher? First, scrape the food <laughs> off the <laughs> George, being a good little monkey, did just as he promised. <laughs> up out of the dishwasher this time. Why? <laughs> Mr. Auger must have missed a clog. <laughs> it was a good thing George had watched him closely. <laughs> Righty-tighty shuts off the water. Everything Mr. Auger had done, but didn't find a clog. If the last clog moved to the kitchen, maybe this clog had moved downstairs. <laughs> this was too big a job for one monkey. He'd better go get the man with the yellow hat from the store. Being a good plumber, George reopened the water main so everyone would have water. Being a monkey, he forgot he'd opened the taps in the apartment. Hundley was relieved. With George gone, nothing sloppy could happen. <laughs> Pipes should always be properly tightened. George, when you came to the store and wanted me to come home, did it have anything to do with the water pouring off of our balcony? No! Did you call the plumber yet? Is something wrong? I was on the roof feeding the pigeons. Holy hinges! Humbly! <laughs> Oh, boy. Found your clog. You can't dump food in the dishwasher. <laughs> and from now on, leave plumbing to the experts. That would be me. His plumbing day's over. George enjoyed a nice hot bath with his new tub toy. <laughs> Guaranteed never to slip down the drain. Yay! 
On warm evenings, George always filled the bird feeder at bedtime. Time for bed, George. <laughs> that way, in the morning, he woke up to the sound of happy birds. Empty. Birds never ate the seeds that fast. Maybe a big bird gulped it all down first thing in the morning. <gasps> no. George would have noticed giant feathers in the neighborhood. Awesome. Maybe you've never seen one because they're nocturnal. <laughs> nocturnal animals are active at night when the rest of us sleep and the town is quiet. <laughs> I gotta finish my route. See ya. <laughs> a possum? George wondered what a possum looked like. So the next night, he prepared for a stakeout. Since he might get hungry if it took a long time, he made himself a tuna fish and banana sandwich. And then he waited, with only the radio to keep him company. Are you ready to hear the legend of the lake creature of Lake Wandersink Lake? <laughs> well, it's said to roam the countryside the first full moon of every summer. And that's tonight. Ooh. <gasps> Was this a possum? And if it was, was it all right? <laughs> well, it certainly had an appetite. Its tracks matched the others. So this was a possum. Now that George had seen one, he could go to bed. George told it to go home, but it didn't go. Maybe the baby possum was lost and needed help finding its family. Aww. But George had no idea where the possum's family lived. Hmm. The possum ate some bird food. Maybe it lived with birds in a nest. See a creature with the head of a fish wandering through town. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's the late creature. George decided that possums and birds probably didn't live together. George thought he knew all the animals on Rankin's farm, but maybe he only knew the day animals. George had never seen a bird like this in the daytime. It must be nocturnal, too. Possum's family wouldn't live here. It was too noisy. <laughs> the 
It was a perfect day to practice your golf swing. Unfortunately for Jumpy Squirrel, that's exactly what George and Bill were doing. The tea's all yours, George. George. <laughs> if you don't choke up on the club, you can really whack the ball. The more club you got between you and the ball, the farther the ball goes when you hit it. Try it. Huh? <laughs> George? <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it's something called leverage. It makes you stronger than you really are. Huh. Keep practicing. Practice is important if you want to be a good golfer. There was no telling when you might get to practice your swing. Thanks, George. Uh, oh. <laughs> so when the man with the yellow hat told George they were going to Scotland to help Uncle Tam move, George and his club were raring to go. Only the club wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Trust me, George. You don't need to bring a golf club to Scotland. to Scotland. Mm. No wonder he didn't need to bring his club. This was like having an uncle with his very own golf store. To go with his very own golf course. At his very own castle. Why don't you go hit a few while this fella and I pack up for the move? <gasps> <laughs> and keep an eye out for that thieving squirrel. He's always after me golf balls. George had no time to lose. It had been hours since he last golfed. <laughs> Bill had warned George that a golfer had to be careful. He could lose his ball in a sand trap or a water trap. Squirrel trap? <laughs> and then he remembered. Something called leverage makes you stronger. If you could hit a ball harder with leverage, maybe you could push a window harder, too. Out of this great castle. A lord agreement says the castle's owner must show the deed every year or pay the back taxes. And I cannot find the deed. Oh. For City Heritage Week, the man with the yellow hat repainted the Endless Park statue. 
and George helped. Oh, missed a spot. Thanks, George. <laughs> My yellow hat! Oh, thank you, George. What are you looking at? Spider webs? <laughs> well, spiders spin those webs with special spider silk. They live there. Uh-huh, and the webs catch their food. Ooh, <laughs> oh, hold it. Ooh. Spiders don't eat apples. They eat small insects and flies. <coughs> George didn't want to eat flies, but he likes spider webs so much Ooh. that he wondered why he couldn't make a monkey web which would catch monkey food. Oh, no. If it's caught in your web, it's yours to keep. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay. See you later. Uh-oh. I hope my paint dries before it rains. George couldn't wait to start making a monkey web. But how does a monkey make a web? First, George looked for things that seemed webby. Like thread. George's thread web didn't look bad at all. <laughs> George, it's gonna rain. Can you take some tarps over to the park to protect that statue so it doesn't get wet? Munley, you knocked down George's whatever thing. You know, at first I thought it was a big spider web. I'll get those tops out of the basement for you. Thread looked good, but George wanted something stronger. Huh? Rubber bands felt strong. <laughs> this looked good too. But was it stronger than a dachshund? Eh? <laughs> 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 yep, it passed the dachshund test. George wanted to show Hundley what the web was for. The wind that blew the leaves must have moved the clouds, too. George definitely needed to study wind. A 
flag showed which way the wind was blowing. But George didn't own a flag. He did, however, know someone who owns socks. Now he'd always know which way the wind was blowing clouds. But how fast were they moving? noise was fast again. It always had more to say when the weather was warm. George, dinner! Hey, is that one of my socks? <laughs> well, I guess it's a wind sock now. <laughs> That's right. And the harder the wind blows, the faster the pinwheel turns. You are turning into a regular weather monkey. <laughs> Say, tomorrow, would you like to visit the Einstein Pizza Weather Station? They have lots of cool stuff that helps predict weather. <laughs> this is it. The most modern weather equipment in the world. How could they forecast weather here? They didn't have socks or pinwheels or crayons. Not even a cricket. Radar tells us where it's raining, and satellites show us Earth from space. So we know where all the clouds are. Ooh. Then this computer tells us what the weather will be. Or it would. Except that's yesterday's picture. We can't find our satellite. You lost your satellite? Well, space is very big. And now the mayor's coming by to see if he can play golf today. He hates getting caught in the rain. <laughs> so did monkeys. Without satellite data, our computer can't forecast. It's just absolutely hopeless. <laughs> what? Where is he going so monkey fast? I think he wants to predict the weather for you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there were storm clouds in the horizon. But the wind was blowing them away. George checked his drawings. The sky was red last night. And now with the cricket's fast chirps, George knew it would be a warm day. Will it be okay to golf? <laughs> they say that some animals can predict the weather. Maybe George is one of them. <laughs> Professors. Mr. Mayor. What's the verdict? We have it on the best authority that this afternoon will be perfect for golf. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> Isn't modern technology wonderful? Say, why don't you join me? The finest days I've ever seen. You were right. Thank you. George was right. George, perhaps tomorrow you could help us find our satellite. George would have to think about that. The sky was telling him tomorrow might be a perfect day for a picnic. <laughs>